Hello, everyone. This is Stephen Palmer and Stephen Mayerson. Did I pronounce that correctly? And this is May 1st, 2018, and we are in room 305 in the LGBT Center at 208 West 13th Street. Um, Steve, let's start out. We won't take a long time on this because we really do want to get centered into the 1960s, 70s. But give me some of your background, where you're from, your family, siblings, religion. Surely. And then I'll start asking Surely. you some dirty born, questions. Born, born and raised in Brooklyn, bed -Stuy. Yes, bed -Stuy, around the corner from the Marcy Projects, where Jay-Z come from. He made it big. I'm still struggling. I make a joke out of that. Uh, both parents, Jewish background, not religious. They both came from kosher homes, okay? But my mom did not. Um, father was a factory worker. Worked on Atlantic and No Strings. They made um, switch Murray Manufacturing they made switch boxes. Okay, as a middle child, had an older brother, five years older, and a younger sister, seven years younger. Um, at the age of oh, I saw Eisenhower campaigning for president with um, Adlai Stevenson, I believe it was, for president, 1952, going down No Strings Avenue in a open convertible. Then we moved to Flatbush, um, went to Walt Whitman, East 17th from Church, by the, which is now the Q and the B train. Uh, oh, we went from Bed-Stuy. My father comes from Bed-Stuy, Franklin and Quincy. My mom, Graham Avenue in Williamsburg. Um, mm. One came from a family of seven, and the other one came from a family of four. My grandfather on my mother's side was in the Russian army when he came here. He worked on Siegel Street, in a men's haberdashery. They called men's haberdasheries back in those days in Williamsburg. And he was a tailor and a presser. And he worked for the Siegel brothers, who they named the street after many years later. A um, little bit of family background. Um, Walt Whitman Junior High School. That's where I started becoming a little bit sexually active. Um, what year were you born? 1944. January 18th, 1944. Um, the end of the war, baby. I was on a Tuesday, one o'clock, an old hospital by the J train, which is not there anymore. I don't know what's the, if the building's even standing any, anymore. Um, I had some a little bit of a re rejection when I was a kid because I was a middle child and you know I acted out. My father used to yell and scream at me and take me to fishing for fishing. My father never liked sports like I do. Because when we moved to Flatbush, I went to Epps Field. I saw the Brooklyn Dodgers play mm. at Epps Field. Mm. And now with Sage, the senior group, I do volunteer work. I started five, six years ago getting tickets for City Field and Yankee Stadium. I just love baseball, um, stupos, and so on, plus a part. And my sexuality, my gay sexuality, started to blossom in my teens. Rooftops of four story tenement. But, oh, getting back to Vernon Avenue, where I was born. It was a limestone, not a brownstone, and it had low ceilings in the front with um, skylight. You know, it was artists, they were built as artist studios, 1880s. I went to public school. 54 on Nostrand and Bedford Avenue, okay? Then my cousins and I, my age, we all lived on the same block, about four or five, were transferred over to another building off Myrtle Avenue. I believe it's on Spence Street, a little red brick building shaped like so. Two-story red brick building. I wonder what the pipes do. Oh, I read later years that um, those pipes were for gaslight. It was a hospital during the Civil War. Hmm. You know, Brooklyn history also. Uh, I throw that in. Flatbush. Every eight years, my family moved, like a bunch of damn gypsies. Um, went to Erasmus, then to Tilden High School. My brother went to the same classes or a year or four or after Barbara Streisand, Erasmus High School in Flatbush. Um, Why did I, you move so often? The family, who knows, who knows, who knows. Well, my mother had surgeries and she couldn't climb the stairs in 10 minutes. Because on Vernon Avenue, my birthplace, we paid $33 rent. Then 1952, $66 rent. In Flatbush, five rooms, sixty-six dollars, unheard of. Mm. Cold heat, uh, and then we moved out to Flatlands, a private house, and then they moved to Bay Ridge. Um, my brother and sister went to college, I didn't. Um, I finished school, just getting my teeth, somewhat decent. What year grades. did you graduate high school? Sixty-two. Nineteen sixty-two. Yeah, sixty-two. Yeah. You were you were beginning to talk about uh, your sexual awakening. Yes, I'm going. Yeah, I'm coming to that again. Yes, um, I was active, but. Not active. Um, I wasn't always sure you know, if the guys liked food. So we used to do it either on rooftops on the floor, or in, the, in their homes when their parents were at work on East 17th Street and Prosser Clark at night in the summertime in the bushes. <laughs> when you and, were in high school? Was no, 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 no. 
uh, before that, uh, 14, 15, yeah, actually junior high, high school. Um, I was in junior high, Walt Whitman Junior High, which is two blocks in back of Erasmus on um, Veronica Place and Snyder Avenue, um, down the block from the precinct. And uh, the guys that I grew up with there, um, then in my late teens, how was I when I moved? I was 15 going on 16. I came out when I was 16 years old. Started hanging out in downtown Brooklyn for the St. George Hotel, Brooklyn Heights, which is a long gate area. And um, when you say you came out, what is that? Came mean? out, came out, you know, open, openly gay. I um, realized, you know, I knew I was different, but you know, you know, in those days, you know, it was a closed subject matter. So this was 1960. 1960. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Because 62, my both my grandmothers died the same year, three months apart. 72 and 87 years old. Big difference in age. What was it? What was it like to come out in 1960? That's pretty Well, crazy. it was very quiet. Um, there were gay bars. I was able to get into gay bars. I don't remember the names where they were located. I got into gay bars. There was one up by Central Park West and 80-something Street near the planetarium or the history place up there, Central Park West in the 80s, a place called the May Wee. Um, May Wee. Wee. Yeah, May Wee. I don't know where they made it. M-A-Y. Uh, May Wee. And I, then I, I don't remember. I, I can't think. Again. This, you know, I don't remember with some of my Puerto Rican and um, Italian friends. Um, I was tall for my age, so they, they never questioned me about my ID, you know, my age. Um, back in those days, um, I had a full head of hair, bushy eyebrows, um, <laughs> which are all gone, thing of the past. Um, what could tell, tell me yes, more about yeah, the uh, rooftop? Sex oh yeah, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. On the landings, right, out, right inside the hallway, because it was winter time, couldn't do it out on the roof, and um, we there in Plastic Park, we had jerk off sessions who can shoot the furthest, um, but no anal intercourse until like eighteen, nineteen years old. Were the guys who that you you were doing this with um, at that age? Did do you think that they came out? gay later on or were they just boys playing with boys boys playing with boys some of them some did come out later on and gay um i kept in contact through them they, their families moved away we live all on the same block by the way on east 17th street most of one lives around the corner red uh, doesn't matter red clock um irish guy and then frank ryan we we're in the same home groom in the ninth grade he lives on caton avenue near coney allen avenue and then you know once my family moves I lost contact with all these people. Um, I worked part time flower shop in the neighborhood there in Flatbush. Uh, my mom's cousin, who lived down the block, her daughter married um, Manny Plachette, Suzanne Plachette's uncle. So I got a weekend job. I had to get junior working papers at 16 to work in the Brooklyn Paramount Theater as an usher. And what carrying on is there in the top balcony, the, the walkway, like back. Hot stuff. Hot huh? stuff. I should make contacts here too. Oh yes. What did your mom say at the age when you were sixteen about you being gay? She never confronted me. Never. Neither my father. Um, but they they, they knew. They, they they just knew, but they never confronted me. They were both, you know, had a lot of street smarts. You know, being from Williamsburg and Bed Stuy. You know, um, they probably knew. Uh, Oh, did you did you let them know? I, I, oh, I no, 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 I did not come out, no. But as the years I grew, just, you know, I started bringing some of my friends home for dinner after work when I had a Wall Street job. And then Madison Avenue through a temp agency. The temp agency was called Austin Office Temps. They're at 50 Court Street, I believe. Uh, friends of ours from across the street on Vernon Avenue, bed Vernon Avenue. I'm just an Italian woman. Um, came over to my mother, looking, she looked for an apartment, and my mother said, yeah, right across the street, the fourth floor, and they became friends, and they moved out of there, they moved to Florida, came back to New York, and um, you know the actor, um, Joe Bianco? No. No Bianco, Joe Bianco, he was in the play La Guardia. He's, 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 I'm not saying he's gay, but um, they were related to him, they lived in Bensonhurst. Uh, I never got tickets for the show, and I still keep in touch with the cousin, um, his cousin, who's, you know, mom, you know, there was three of them, Clarice and her twin sisters, Roseanne and Joanne, that they moved away over the years. I keep in touch with Clarice, and uh, we talk, she's home disabled right now. Um, but uh, Did you, you, know, did, did you have girlfriends at the time when you were... So oh, you no, I, I went to junior high school, 
and high school dances, but then we'd go, a bunch of us would go to the um, ice cream parlor on Flappish Avenue near Parks, so called um, Carson's, I think, or Carlton's, something like that. And then we'd all go home our separate way. No, no, never had no, um, never had an affair with a woman. No, no, no. Never slept with a woman. No, never, never. So now, now we're in the early '60s, mm -hmm. um, and where where are you living? What do you consider early '60s? Because my family moved um, uh, in 1960, from '52 to '50 to '60, then from '60 to. Well, my, I moved out when I was maybe 19 years old. Um, Where did you move? Uh, West Side, uh, West 71st and Riverside Drive, Riverside Studio Apartments, adding room up there. Um, so I was working at Wall Street at the time, yeah. A room up there, $15 a week, uh, refrigerated in hallway, but each apartment room had their own little compartment. Uh, then I moved back to Brooklyn after six months. I didn't like living up there because I was working on Wall Street for a French-Canadian brokerage house um, to Wall Street. I moved in with a gay friend of mine, and then his brother lived downstairs with his lover at the time. And uh, my sex is limited because, you know, I wasn't living alone. Um, so Brooklyn Heights, the promenade, you know, was a good spot. Previous guys used to take me home. And so this is now like early, mid-60s? Yes, this is 1962 to 64, 60. I moved to Queens in 66, January 66. So... You spent time at the Brooklyn Promenade, and that was very yes. gay at the time. Yeah. Oh, yes. Boys in the band that um, play centered around um, no, Brooklyn Heights? I can't remember. Heights? I don't remember that. Okay. So Sorry. what was... There was, two, there was two gay bars in later years on Montague Street. The um, Piano Bar, they called it, at the Bassett Hotel, I think. And there was another bar across the street down the block on Montague Street between Henry and Hick Street. I can't remember the name, so... See, that's when my memory is faded now. You have a lot of memory. Um, um, if you could describe what the Brooklyn Promenade was, you know, if you just, something comes to your mind and the lighting, well, it was a, it was the people. A, it was a, it was a, it was a um, very, somewhat, almost openly gay before Stonewall, okay? There's this one Irish queen, I don't know who she was, but, um, she would pray, pray and up and down the promenade, singing out loud with voices and saying, you know, how proud of you she is being um, gay, blah, 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 blah. And people just laughed and applauded her. Um, but there was one incident, unfortunately, at the end of the promenade by Remsen Street, like a little circle, cars would park there sometime, one guy got she kicked out and he died. I don't remember what year that was. Gay bashed? Yes, gay bashed to death. Um, that had to be in the 60s when I was still living there. I don't remember the exact year, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, but you would. It made the newspapers. Did I get the killer? I don't think so. You would. Uh, you would cruise though there. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. And I had two, or three steady friends. One Cuban guy who lived on State Street in a furnished room. <laughs> I kind of like freaked out. Had these religious candles burning. The big cross over the bed. Uh, <laughs> but he was gorgeous in bed. Um, Caesar. Caesar. And another guy from Williamsburg. I like my Latin men. Um, no, I got gotcha. you. We'll, we'll talk some other time. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. So that was that was kind of your scene until 1966. That's and what then was I moved out to Queen. I, I, oh, I temporarily moved out to Midwood section by the Edward R. Morrow High School, which is there now, um, and it's now a film studio or something off Avenue M on the Q train or the B train to local stop. Uh, with two friends of mine that says, we're moving out to Queens. We've got a nice big sofa bed for you. Have plenty of room. Because we're, three of us are living in a very cramped apartment. Um, prior to that, Vincent, who's out in California now, Vincent and Stephen, Stephen and I roommates, then they got married of sorts. You know, they were hooked up and I just couldn't, it was like an L-shaped studio. So I moved out somewhere else. I think I moved out with, to Midwood. And then when Stephen and Vincent broke up, Stephen, I mean, Vincent, you know, moved to three of us living there, that one bedroom in Midwood. I don't, I don't remember where I was working. I may have been working on West 32nd Street through the temp agency for a chain of stores in the Midwest. It was called Spartan's Department Stores. Uh, I was accounts adjustable for a couple of weeks. And then we made the move to Queens two weeks before my 22nd birthday. It was in January 1966. I said, well, this will be a temporary move. That was 52, 53 years ago. I'm still in Queens. When you, 
Let's let's talk a little yes. bit about the the sense of a gay consciousness. Can you even say that in the early '60s? What was? Oh yes, yes, we, we yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah, was you know, the community all Mary, like? Yeah, the expression "Oh Mary, this, Mary that," you know, Mary, Mary. They, they called each other Marys back then. Um, you screaming sissy. Um, the, the F word was very seldom used. There were straight guys in groups in the neighborhood, come through the neighborhood, terrorizing occasionally. You know, um, they do it still, unfortunately, here on uh, Halloween night in the village. Gay bashing. Um, that's why they have so many freaking police. And they cut parades short. Well, they cut all the parades short. Matter of fact, the gay pride parade coming up, they cut it short too. It's only going to be like 20 blocks. And so we go uptown. Cook. I have no idea what's going on. I don't march no more. I can't do it no more. My legs don't give them. So I come here. I watched for an hour or two, and I come back to the center. And then I'm going, hopefully this year, there's a um, gentleman I know. I'm, I'm sorry for side sidelining a little bit. Don't worry. There's a gentleman who works on the 7 train. He operates the train doors. And when there's track work and the trains aren't coming to Manhattan, I spoke to him a couple of weeks ago at 74th Street and Roosevelt Avenue, where the EDF and the R trains are downstairs, up and down near Jackson Heights area. And uh, cut to talking. And um, I don't know what brought the subject matter on. Um, I said, you like Carnegie Hall? Da -da -da. I like baseball? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's from, he's straight. Trinidad, I says, um, okay, here's a, I wrote him a voucher or a ticket, but I gave it to his, somebody in his family to go to a Carnegie Hall concert. It was a spiritual program. It wasn't gospel. We get, they call me direct, by the way, okay? Um, and I took him, him, his wife and kid, they came to a Yankee game. I said, we're, when I said to him, I said, we are an LBGT senior center, SAGE. I said, and I'm part of Stonewall history. His face lit up. He said, oh, my God. He, he's involved with a um, LBGT Caribbean group. And this year, um, he invited me. I had to pay my own tickets, okay? Um, they're having like an after pride celebration in a restaurant down by the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. It'll be like tapas and whatever from 6 to 10 o'clock, and I want to go. So, that um, sounds great. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and you and could I, work and on I, him and find out if we, we're really looking for people of color to talk to about their experiences and consciousness around Stonewall. But go oh, on. Okay, okay. I, it may, it, I, I'm assuming it's maybe it's a much younger crowd. They went around it, but I can ask him when I see him. Uh, I saw him today. Matter of fact, I was at my station trying to you know retrieve my message from you on my cell phone, and his train pulled, and I didn't see him. He said, "Hey, hey, how, how you doing?" <laughs> Did um. You moved to Queens in... Uh, January 1966. January 1966. What town in Queens was, did you... Corona. Know? Right oh. back of Lefrak City. Oh, God. Uh, that was... Lefrak City was like brand new at the time. Right? No, it was built in the late 50s, early 60s, but still pretty new. Pretty new. It was mostly Jewish, Italian, a few blacks. Yeah. Uh, we lived across the street in Sherwood Village Apartments. So we had a three-bedroom... No, two-and-a-half-bedroom apartment... Fifth floor, I don't know what the garage cost that was, but um, $185 rent. And in those days, they gave one month's free concession. That's amazing. Yeah. Where did you go when you were in Queens? To hang? Did you go to Roosevelt Avenue? No, no those Heights? bars weren't active. There was one in Regal Park called Club Baron or El Baron, okay? On Sanders Street, not on Sanders Street, excuse me, Austin Street and 63rd Drive. A... Latin woman was the bartender manager, Kathy. She's retired. She's moved back down to her country. I don't think she's with us anymore. And a few of the others. And then there's another one in a building down in Queens Boulevard in Elmhurst. On the right, as you're going down Queens Boulevard near 69th Street, um, a lot of car dealers are there. And um, it was a pink building. I don't remember the name of it. It was okay. Very crowded. Had a dance floor. Um, then you had Tristing Place in Kew Gardens on Lefty Boulevard where the Q10 bus goes. To Kennedy Airport. I worked in Kennedy Airport too, by the way, for um, Restaurant Associates, Air a la carte, and Marriott Corporation between Kennedy and LaGuardia. That's where I built up some of my union pension, which they screwed me out of four years of pension. So that's another story. Uh, in, um, were you coming into the city? At oh, yeah, point? I was coming to the city on my days off, yes, yes. Where but, would you go in the city? But downtown, now, besides the Stonewall, there's another place called the Gold Bug on West 4th. The, the, the Gold Bug? The Gold Bug. G-O-L-D Bug. The Gold Bug. Yes, yes, yes. And one of the drag queens that worked there on the floor as the waitress, she used to come into the store, Bambi, okay? And there was Dennis, I don't remember his last name. Dennis from Staten Island, they call him Twiggy because he dressed just like Twiggy. He could have 
Rin, the spitting image twin of Twiggy. Got very little recognition over the years. I don't know if he's dead or alive. Um, the hairstyle, the dress, and had the balls to ride like that in full drag, or even in the summertime on the Staten Island Ferry. Lives in Staten Island. I said, aren't you afraid to go home? Now, we also had a go-go boy who did upstairs in the furnished room. Am I jumping ahead too fast? No, no, go ahead, okay. go ahead. I'll, I'll pull you back and okay, okay, go okay. ahead, though. Okay, um, the owners were definitely Italian mafia. I told you this on the phone. Zucchi was the owner. He lived in Little Italy. His son Joey came with his girlfriend occasionally. They'd have a few drinks. Nice guy, though. And we are, we're talking about Stonewall. Stonewall, okay, because the gold bug was in there. Wanted no, no, to make no, sure. that, that was, I don't know nobody. Because when Stonewall did finally close doors, finally, I went there to work as a waiter on the floor. I, I lasted two nights. They didn't want me on the floor because, you know, the tips, you know, that I was cutting in tips. So I just, and I got another job out the airport. Uh, Mario, the manager. Okay, the movie states that um, the liquor was driven in a stolen truck from New Jersey and watered down. Now, I'm going to get to the watered down part in a second. Mario, the manager, lived in New Jersey. He'd come in with his car, four door, big. Yes, maybe a Chevy Impala or whatever. And he'd park. I'd come in early on Friday, 6.30, 7 o'clock. He'd meet me in front of Stonewall. I would take his car by myself. I have a license. I'd go over to the Little Italy, to the um, liquor store. It was owned, probably my for your own, on Mulberry Street. I don't know if it's there anymore. I picked the liquor up. I always put it in the back seat. Now, Tree, the bartender there, claims that the liquor was watered down after I left. He, uh, Mario went to the trunk of the car and got the, whatever the hell it is, he poured into the liquor to water it down. I don't know. The, so you that, you that mentioned was, Tree. Tree, tree is the bartender. The, tree is big guy, yeah. He came way after me. He's looking for all the credit and glory. He's not too friendly with me. Go ahead. You can take the F train going off. Because he lives in Chelsea, across the street from my friend Bill Lafferty, who got me the job there. Now, Bill and his brother were both gay, going back to Brooklyn many years ago, okay? And, um... His brother James was getting dragged. They went Christmas Eve, Midnight Mass, and he looked like he could have passed from the bat of an eye or, or a quick glance, Jacqueline Kennedy, but he was in drag. He That's was in drag, and he looked, looked like Jacqueline, Jacqueline Kennedy. Kennedy. Yep. The pillbox hat and all. Um, I'm sorry. I'm no, no, I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm, don't worry about it. I'm, 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 side, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sidetracking, sorry. What is tree what is does he have a second name or that's all i know him just by everybody calls him tree i think he's on the list somewhere okay so you're um that's why i argue with him about the watered down liquor because he said i would leave that's what he's saying maybe it was because i didn't drink on the job um we were allowed to drink at, at the end of the night possibly but if i decided to drink on the job i'd be fully full and flat on my now mario the bartender is deceased and teddy kane who's also a bartender german queen Lived around the corner building, Waverly and Christopher, the third floor apartment. Sometimes on Friday night we'd go up there, have some coffee or tea before we'd go to work. Um, there's a Puerto Rican guy, Don, from Brooklyn Heights, went on for many years. Never had sex with him. Um, they got into a big fight one night, and the Puerto Rican guy beat the shit out of Teddy. And Mario just stood there and says, okay, that's enough. That was out of place. Um, he's an older guy. He moved to Florida. I don't think he's with us anymore. I don't know what happened. To Don. Don moved out to... Um, Chicago, somebody's Midwest. Maybe he was from there originally, I don't remember. Um, so Mario is deceased, the bartender. I, I, I vaguely remember him. I think he was only part time. Of course, he's. Oh, I needed a pair to draw a floor sketch for you. Shoot. Um, we can do that later. Yeah. Uh, um, Mario was the but, manager. But there's Mario, the manager, and there's also Mario, the bartender. So, Mario the manager, what was your interaction with Mario the manager? Just manager for the bar, and he was straight, family in New Jersey, Italian man, in his 40s, I don't think he's around no more. And uh, that was it. But he was very nice with me, you know, very nice. Steve, how are you? Boom, 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 boom. Called me to come in on my day off, you know, we didn't have cell phones in those days. How, how did he, he's a straight man, he's an Italian straight man, yes. mafia. Yeah. Oh, he, he had a full-time day job working a soda truck, drove soda truck, soda bottles and stuff in New Jersey. And when Stonewall closed the last and final time, so Steve says, come to Jersey, he says, I'll give you a drive as a truck driver driving soda. I says, no, thank you. That's how he, he extended it. Also, guys on the door, 
a heavy set guy named Chris. He lives somewhere in Queens, so I see him in Jamaica Ray Avenue and 105th Street by the old Mary Mayfield Hospital. And there's a park there, you know, the old Mary Mayfield? Sure. Hospital? The park, the King's Park, there's a very cruising spot, but very dangerous. Really? I did very my, one dangerous. of my rotations there and I used to walk out very, in the park at very, Mary Immaculate. Very dangerous there, yeah, okay? And um, Chris was on the door. A guy named Joe Bish, Italian mafioso, of course. I saw his picture in the paper years later, maybe in the 80s or early 90s. He was under federal protection. They moved him out of New York. Of course, he blew the whistle on the mob. But they didn't, the article didn't go into I saw his picture. I said, oh, shit. I'm sorry I didn't cut it out. How did, how did the mafia, the the people who were part of the mafia at Stonewall, get along with the gay? They, they, the the owners were never there. Once in a while they come in. That's it. Mario, well, the manager. The manager, the Mario. He was part of the the, the render place. Okay, but the actual owners from Little Italy, those are the mafia I'm talking about. Mario maybe didn't get involved with them except for the running the bar for them. That was it. Okay. Um. House rule, I said I'd need a floor, I meant to draw a floor paint today, shit, I forgot. I don't have any blank paint. Oh, wait, 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 I got something in my bag. And I gotta put my glasses on. Um, we had a steel door, when that steel door slammed shut, it was like on these rolling warehouse doors, round wheels, sliding doors. We had the MDF to get the table, because we were not licensed. We were acting as a private club, but no membership. That's for sure. I mean, at a coat room. Just for the uh, record, Steve is yeah. going to draw a picture of the floor plan. So best of my knowledge. To the best of his knowledge. Um, okay. So um, uh, now I'm just watching the floor plan being uh, drawn. I'm, I'm so you, so you knew you knew Mario, who was a manager, but he wasn't one of the mafia. Well, owners. he he's connected with them, but what what the relationship was, I don't know. Uh, and and they were the when you did see those folks come around, they were respectful. While. Oh yes, absolutely, yes, 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 always, always, always. They, Zuki they, Zuki was the owner. This guy named Zuki was the owner. I don't think he's with us no more. Very short of time and very sharp. Right? And um, a friend of mine was at the bar. Okay, who who's deceased now, he died of AIDS. Straight, excuse me, gay friend of mine, name is Steve also. Um, he was at the bar with another Italian friend who died recently in his 80s, and they were very generous tippers. So then they gave me a $5 tip, I put it in a bucket. So Mary, Zuki came around the bar, and he says, you know those guys over there? He says, no, he, he, one of them could, you can see the, the Italian look, the, you know, the connection. He says, you know, they're, they're friends with He says, okay, then he looked, he walked back to the end of the bar and he saw his, somebody left you five dollars. Yeah, he says, my two friends right there. I don't think he had any business sticking his nose into my business with them that, but that's another story. So, okay. So, so the mafia guys were respectful. They were respectful of the other people in the bar as well? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. They weren't uh, making fun of them or pushing them around or anything. I'm going to just put this on um, pause for a moment. Surely. For the record, we are looking at a, a rough floor a diagram, a rough sketch of um, Stonewall. The original, the original. The original Stonewall, because when you walk in, um, to right now, these days, to the left is where the bar is. Um, but uh, Stonewall used to be the bar that we have now, plus a whole other section to the right where our. Another building. Well, another building where yeah, the, yeah. what is it, the nail, nail salon? salon is now, yes, it was. So this was very, very it was big, big it was bi Oh, yes, there's a big dance floor here. And here's also, but here the lights were dimmer. Here's a jukebox here and a jukebox here. Marvin Gaye, Tammy Terrell, and um, Dinah Ross songs. To come down, and the, the song, Oh Happy Days, when she's. I, oh, I, I, Ed, I, Ed, nice, Edwin Hawkins oh, singers. Singers. There you go, thank you. He died about a year or so ago. Yep, yep. Um, you were talking about a black gentleman who... Yes. What was yes. his name? John. That's all I remember. Everybody called each other by their first name. And the cops won their earlier raids before the 27th. Um, I was there from January 18th, 1969. It was a Saturday night. It was my 25th birthday. My friend Bill Lafferty, God rest his soul, who lives across the street from Tree, um, pushed me out of the house to go there for an interview. And they put me to work that night. At the Stonewall? At the Stonewall. And you met, is that when you met John? 
Uh, John was there already, but I didn't get to talk to him until like a week or two later. And what did John do? What was John was in the men's room. He had a table set up. He had mirrors in the bathroom and, and, a, and a counter. You know, hairbrushes, colognes, after shave, and um, hand towels, only for show. Just to keep the guys from using the booths and the urinals for sex. Oh, that was his job. Was, was John gay also? No, I don't think so. I don't think. He was so old he could hardly walk. Maybe he was. Who knows? He was so old he could hardly walk. <laughs> yes. Oh, interesting. I've never heard about John before. Um, so you, you were saying that there was, I mean, there were raids before. Uh, small, June small raids. Small weeknight raids. What were they like? What was a raid um, like? Well, if you the, were, raid, the raid, from your the, guy at the, door, the guy at the door, whoever was on the door that night, would close that rolling door. And that was a sign for me and the other bartender. During the week, there's one bartender. Make sure that the money was out of the door, put it in the money in our pockets, and get the tape out. Because we had to ring up the sales, and they would go through at the end of the night. We'd get out of the stone wall, and we'd go to the, and it's still there on 6th Avenue and Waverly, the Waverly Inn. We'd meet there for coffee, and then they'd hand in the tapes and their money. Of course, I keep my tip money. Who would you hand that in to? To um, one of the managers who was ever on duty that night. Not always Mario. Not always Mario. Okay. So you'd go to the Waverly Inn. Inn yes. Okay. That's, that's our meeting place, you know. So now you're a bartender there. Yes. Okay. And you're going to say, talk about your experience of being at a raid. What was that like? What it was happened? scary the first time. What happened? Um, now you've got, got to give me a second or two to think back. And take your time. Take yes. your time. Because yes. also, if, slow it down just a little bit for the, um, um, the microphone so we get to hear everything you're saying. I get nervous a little bit. I speak fast. Don't Sorry. worry about it. Uh, I don't remember if I was working the front bar or the back bar. Maybe on a Friday night or a Wednesday night. It, was, it wasn't a very busy night. It was March or April. Whether it was shit outside, um, snowing maybe, sleet and stuff. I had a hard time getting in on the eerie afternoon. I was even out in Briarwood, Kew Gardens area, <coughs> by Queens Boulevard and the Van Wick Expressway. And they briefed me in the beginning, you know, and the others told me, you know, when the door closes, you know, just make sure you get everything out of the register, the money, and the, um, the tape, the register, you know, ring it out, boom, boom, yep. boom, 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 five keys. Real old-fashioned register, real old-fashioned register. And then get your ass off the bar. That's it, and get your jacket on and just blend in with the crowd. And I was lucky, all five, six times I did. Oh, that's interesting. So the bartenders had to get from behind the bar. They they have, you have all the money in your pockets. You have the tape so that none of this stuff is... They did, for the cops, wouldn't have no evidence that we're running an illegal bar without a license. Okay. I thought okay. you knew that already, sorry. No, 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 no. mentioned on the phone. Con consider me to be completely pedestrian. Okay. Um, and, then, and then you would go into the crowd and just... Blend and walk away and get over to the Waverly Inn. Go to the Waverly Inn and yeah. hand the money over. When the cops came in, was that, was that scary? Was that... I, I was scared. I didn't feel uncomfortable. You know, I felt uncomfortable. Um, I felt the tension, the hyperness in me, you know, the nervousness of don't know what's going to happen. Am I going to get, I've never been arrested, you know, I never got caught. Um, they, had, they did have one raid one night when I wasn't there, it was my night off. And somehow the case wound up in court out in Kew Gardens near my house, but I didn't go to the court. I, I didn't go. I didn't want, you know, I said, no, let them tell me about it at work when I go back to work. When the cops came in on those raids, these are prior to Stonewall. These are during Stonewall. This is, this is Stonewall. I mean, I'm talking Stonewall. You know, six, seven months I was there. Right, right, right. No, I'm talking about the Stonewall riot. When you when the raids that you experienced at yes. Stonewall before the riots, riots in June, um, those raids. They were smaller. They were smaller. Did the cops rough people up? What? Not that I can remember. I don't think so. Got everybody out, everybody out, and they made show. Sometimes they'd stop us, look at our IDs, make sure we were not, you know, on the rage. With people who were dancing, what would happen with no, that? No, nothing, nothing. They, they just stopped. The, the jukebox got turned off. We unplug it, and that was it. You know, everybody out. Boom, and the lights would come on. The house lights would come on. And when they said everybody out, where would now, everybody? Out into the street. No, disperse out into the street. Get out. Get out. Get out. See the biggest complaint came from two, three doors down the apartment house, the high rent 
people was we tell the Stonewall patrons, please do not linger outside in front of any Stonewall or on the street, on the cars or across street park. But they did. They were drunk. They, you know, and we had no control over that. There was constant pressure from the, and maybe some of the other businesses on the avenue. So when a raid would happen, everybody was expected to leave the yes. building. Yes. When the cops left... Well, we weren't told verbally, but, you know, common sense told you get the hell out of there. When the cops left, did everybody pile back in? And no, 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 that was it. Those were closed for the night. It was closed for the evening. Wow. I didn't stick around. I'd go to Waverly Inn, have a sandwich, cup of coffee, get on the subway and go home. I was paid, I was paid part of my bank, I think it was 10 or $20 in cash change, you know, for the bank, for the register. My pay was $10 a night, no matter, even if I was a waiter. I worked as a waiter one night, they needed a fill-in, it was very slow, the kid was sick or some shit, so I worked as a waiter one night, and uh, I did okay. Oh, how come I'm not on the bar tonight, Steve? Just helping out. This is a great story. Um, so bring us up then to the riot. The big one? Yeah. June 27th. What? I was on the front bar. It was a Friday night. I went to probably the liquor store, picked up the liquor for the weekend. And um, I don't remember the time frame. It had to be after midnight, though. Maybe Alex remembers better than me. Um, but um, the, the door slams, and um, Alex claims that... Uh, I jumped over the bar, you know, with a box. I had no box. Maybe it was just a cash register drawer. And I was cleaning out the cash and putting the tape in my box. But there was no box. I don't know the fucking box he's talking about. So I'm just cursing. Um, box he's talking about. Um, he probably remembers things I don't. Um, Your friend Alex. Not Alex Feingold. You're going to see him next Monday night. He oh, was, Monday in Forest Hills. Yes. Monday the 7th. What was um, Alex's? Was Alex working also? Alex, not there. No, no, no. Alex had a regular job outside. So that Alex was, was just, just patient, happened to be really. at the bar. Yeah, we used to be roommates in Brooklyn years ago. Okay. And so you were both there that evening. He remembers yeah. you jumping oh. over the bar with yes, the box. Yes, yes. He was in the front bar. Oh, God, what I do the same thing. Yeah. I don't know which, which register I was working. I think it was the back one. And this was a little bit busier than the front one because it was by the dance area. So what happened? What were you, what were you thinking? Well, what? Um, I'm not outside, you know. Um, I was a bit nervous because the money was like bulk to my, I didn't have a jacket on, it was late June. And you know, only my tight pants on. Um, and uh, I put the tape in the back, the cash in the front pocket. My keys were poking me in the leg. <laughs> Um, and I started to work my way down, um, wave, no, towards Christopher Street, towards Christopher Street, for some dumb reason. Instead of going, cutting across Waverly Place, I cut down Christopher, was like, that seems the way the mob was moving. I was just moving with the mob, and I was going to get on the subway and go home. I said, oh shit, I got to go to the Waverly, and so I came around the long way, 6th Avenue, the prior raid, if you want to consider it that, okay, that is big, okay, and that's the one where the cops came, oh, Queens turned the car over, the police car over, police car, okay, um, John, the old man, there's a paddy wagon, but they rushed, that was another one, I don't remember the, the one, exactly months they were, or they, they, I, I, you know, I, John, I, the African American the guy man. from the, in the yes, yes, bathroom, yes, yes, okay, that was another, um, they, maybe three months prior, um, just give me a second. Gather my thoughts, please. Okay. Take your time. Queens were running from the cops, about four cops with the nightsticks running down the street, hitting the street with their nightsticks. And there used to be a, on, at the corner of Greenwich, because we have the women's house of detention. There used to be a fruit and vegetable store there on the corner. And across the street was a men's shop called Casual Air, very expensive men's shop. And the women... Casual... Air. 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 Casual air. Okay. It's not that long gone. And the Queens got to the corner, the fruit and vegetable stand. They're picking up grapefruits and oranges, anything they can throw at the cops. <laughs> and the woman from the whole tent was screaming, Yeah, you go, you fucking faggot Queens. <laughs> so the women in the detention yeah, center were cheering, cheering them on? Cheering, cheering the Queens. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry for cursing again. 
no, please curse. No, no, this, no, no. this is okay, your okay, story. Okay. Yes, you yes. Know, not yes, yes. I'm, I'm more than one occasion they saw it. Um, but sometimes they can be very foul mouthed up there, um, the woman. Um, Don't you wish you could have my husband's penis? <laughs> Looking for another night of fun, girls? Forget it. You don't have the right things that we have up here. <laughs> this is from the woman's, woman's house. Woman's house is dead. It's not there no more. Yep. No. no, I know the whole mm. section there. Um, what is the first thing that you saw that made it seem like, wow, this isn't just the regular raid? We're oh, out the, front. The, the, the police person outside, two cop cars, and um, the, 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 the amount of cops and the crowd that gathered outside. I said, oh shit, let me get a freak out of it. Alex was still inside. How he got stuck inside? Him and several others, a few others, I don't remember how many, he'll tell you that, um, were stuck. They, they lined them up over here outside the coat room, okay? And one of them, now he, he doesn't remember now, he, he, I could have sworn he told me that um, they wanted to see their IDs and one person didn't have ID, he'll, he'll explain more. Um, I could have sworn he told me that one and got hit with the nightstick when she opened up her mouth, a Puerto Rican queen opened up her mouth, some Spanish queen opened up her mouth to the cops or cop, whatever, I don't know how many were there inside. But outside it was chaos. Now. Fast forward three days after that, the lesbians started to show up and they tried to take all these years, they're still trying to get, take credit for them being there. Maybe a few would come in occasionally, but it was not a lesbian hangout at all, okay? Very far in between. Um, but were lesbians part of the riots that evening? That evening, maybe later on that night. Um, I didn't see any of them outside, but the, the crowds were, 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 were pathetic. Um, it was crowded, it was noisy. It, was it had to be after like 12, 1 o'clock. I knew it was after midnight. It had to be late, but I don't remember the exact time. That I cannot remember. Do you remember the car being, th uh, police car the being car, pushed over? When I came outside the stone wall, the car was already being, they were, they were rocking it. They were rocking the police car. I didn't stick around. I started to walk towards you know, Greenwich. Not the time with the fruit throwing, that was previously. And I didn't hear or see nothing, and I didn't see nothing in the newspaper about it, but I heard two days later, that's what happened. And the reason that you left pretty quickly was because you had the money and well, the money. I know where I had to go. I knew you I had, had to go, go to the yeah, Waverly. Yeah, it was my responsibility to get there with the money, yeah. Um, did you, when you gave the money over, did you come back to the stone wall? No, no, I went home. I got on the subway and go home, no. There's too many people out there that night, too much chaos, and maybe I was subconsciously scared. I didn't want to, get into, I didn't want to be carried out in the panty. And there were some in the raids. There, there were some in the raids where some of the queens were put into the panty wagons. For what reason? Some were in drag, some were not. Um, one of the earlier raids. I'm sorry, not the, the night of the big raid. I'll call, I'll call that, I'll dress that as the big raid. Oh, I can understand being scared to death, right? I don't know that I would have stuck around, but I don't know what I would have done because yeah, I was yeah. eight. Oh, I all, too young. Oh, all I remember at the time... You were still a baby. My father was... I was in New Hyde Park at my grandmother, Grandma Harrington's house, and um, my father said, Bernice, my mother's name, come in here, look at the news, look at these queens jumping up and down. <laughs> And in retrospect, it, it must have been Stonewall because I went in too and I saw a fire and, you know. Yeah, they set garbage cans on the fire in the street corner by the park. Did you see that? Yeah, happen? I saw one in the distance at, by the subway station, but I went the other way. I, 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 I directed myself away from trouble. I said, something's not right over there and I got to take the UDF train home anyhow. Did you come back the next day? No, not for two days. Not for two days. So things calm down. Did well, maybe I did. I, I did it again. I'm sorry. I don't think so. That was a Friday night. Maybe I did come back the next night. I don't remember. Maybe I did come that next night. They said we're not opening. Come back tomorrow. Something to that. That may have been one of the other raids. That's where my mind is not clear anymore. That's all right. 49 years. Damn. Um, did you... Um, when was the next time you came back to the stone wall? You know, to work. Um, probably that Sunday or Monday. I mean, Monday or Tuesday. No, I was off Monday and Tuesday. I'm sorry. I was off Monday and Tuesday. So it was a Friday night. I didn't come in Saturday. I went back Sunday. I don't know if they opened that night. We didn't have liquor. That's the, the big raid. 
we're serving juice now, it became a juice bar. Um, didn't want to, because um, the cops did one night come in one of the raids. Maybe it wasn't a big raid previously. They took the bottles of liquor and they were bashing them against the mirrors on the wall behind the big bar. They were mirrors, mirrored wall. What night was that? That was one of the raids. Uh, oh, but I don't remember which raids. one. I don't remember. That's what I was told by others. But I was not inside that. I get out of this. I, I, I was fast on my feet when I was young. Oh, now, that's scary to have yes. uh, them busting the bottles. Yes, yes, Alex will tell you more. I think he was there. If you can remember all this, Alex Feingold. Would, when you went home, did you see this on the news? I don't remember. You don't remember? Don't okay. Remember. Did you have any sense at the time? I had, at 1969, I was living in Briarwood. We had a little black and white portable TV. I hardly watched it. And I took guys home over the weekend, my bed partners for the weekend. They'd stay with me. One of them I really miss lives in Jersey also, Bergenlander, Alfredo Giuseppe Rossi. Couldn't get more Italian than that. He was a sweetheart. And uh, yes, I heard he was in California. He even told me where his family lived in New Jersey, the street, the house. Dresser. But um, he got involved with a, another gay guy in another building next to mine. And the um, relationship didn't work out. I don't know what the hell was going to happen. He, he came back one day, he got mad, had a fit, back his fist into the wall. He says, hey, I just painted this apartment. <laughs> When people think about Stonewall, they think about that evening and that particular weekend as... I call it an uprising, if, you, if, if I'm using proper terminology. And why do you call it an uprising? Upri uprising of the gay movement, you know, for the suppression we went through and, and the, the shit, you know, um, the crap we put up with all those years and the rejection and, um, you know, um, we weren't allowed to go to um, bars and gather, I think, in the 50s, late 50s, early 60s, if I'm correct. I don't know what New York State law was back then. Robert Wagner had some strict stuff, too, in terms of the bars. I mean, what you're you talking about. You, 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 you interviewed him already? No, 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 no. Oh, 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 oh Robert, the, the mayor. The mayor. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the mayor. I'm sorry. What was his name just now downstairs with us? Um, Robert at, Woodworth. Robert Woodworth, yes, yes. You interviewed him yet? No. Okay. Um, Let me know when you're going to, and if I'm in the building, I'll bring you that pamphlet I left home, and you can photo it, and I'll walk right out. I won't stay. Oh, no, no. We, we, we got more work to do. Oh, you're okay. not done with me yet. Uh, okay, okay. Um, uh, sorry, let me just uh, ahead, get sorry. my head back together for a second. Oh. You refer to it as an uprising. Did you yes. feel at that time it was an uprising, or in no, retrospect? No, I was, in, I, was, I was 25 years old. I was young. I was crazy. Um, I, had, I still didn't know where I was going to go in life as far as my working career would go. You know, so it, 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 it's just another passing phase if you want to consider a phase. Did you, did you attend um, the march, the first I, march? No, first march I was working. I had to start a job. job. Um, but I've been to a few other marches after that. I got tired. Um, I never marched or rode in the Sage trolley car in later years. I, I just watch now. I'm just an observer. What was your first year that you went to a Pride March? Oh, happy in the early 70s. 71 or 2 maybe. I don't remember. That what was it away. like? It was a lot of people. And the weather was nice. That I remember. And it was very, very long. Now one year, going back 15, 20 years ago, I was with a friend of mine from the Bronx and Queens. And his sister came down with a gay friend of mine. His... Um, and to his mother, about five or six hours, we watched for Madison Square Park. And it ran almost five hours long. That's what I was exhausted. Oh, what am I talking about? More than 25 years ago. The end of the parade, we followed it all the way down to Christopher Street from 5th Avenue and 25th Street, Madison Park. We followed it all the way down to Christopher Street. It was so mobbed down there. I said, okay, guys, I'm out of here. And I went home. I did that once and won't do it again. <laughs> Can't do it again. It was, it was wonderful. It was a very positive, wonderful, good feeling. And that year was I, early no, no, 70s, you think? Uh, no, no, no. Um, 80s, somewhere in the late 80s. Um, of course, Willie, who died of AIDS, um, his brother, me, his brother, was Willie with us? That was 26, he died 26 years ago, so maybe 26 years ago, so 80s, some 80s, late 80s possibly. On the S, I'll, I'll call Benny when I get home tonight, if he remembers. Let me talk to you a little bit more about the late 60s. Sure. In, in Greenwich Village, the hippie thing, the anti-war. Julius's bar, Julius bar was in full swing. 
Julius's bar. Yep. Um, Packed on weekends. I don't like crowds, so I didn't go there very often. What was what was the village? Were you politically involved? No, did not you, at all. How did you feel about Vietnam? I was against it. Did you go to the marches at all? No. No. So you weren't you weren't politically involved. And how about? No. I'm a member now of the Le Queens County Lesbian and Gay Democratic Club. I'm a lifetime member. Uh -huh. Jackson Heights, Elmhurst, and we serve all of Queens. Uh, but I do vote. I'm a third generation Democrat and I do vote. Yeah. Um, do, do you remember the Black Panther movement or Vaguely. the women's Vaguely. movement? Women's or? movement, yes, and Black Panthers, yes. Did, did you feel akin to those movements at all at the time? Did you feel like there was a relationship between what gay people were going through and it wasn't I on your radar. I separated it. You separated it. Okay. How about Woodstock? Uh, or, or Woodstock. My sister was there with some of her friends. My uncle, who's deceased now, he's a World War II vet. Um, he drove up there to bring them food and stuff. He couldn't get near it. My sister was there. And my sister and her husband have a house up in Woodstock now, but they live here in Brooklyn. And, but you weren't interested no, in no, 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 the no, hippie no. counterculture no, no, scene? No, 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 no. I grew up with rock and roll. And Motown, Daniel Ross. I saw 19, late 60s maybe, Diana Ross and the Supremes when they were the Supremes, Stevie Wonder and Temptations at Forest Hill Stadium. A gay friend of mine was a groundskeeper that he got us in when I was living in Queens. What a concert. Yes. Um, as the early 70s, so in the early 70s, did you get involved with the Gay Liberation Front or Gay Activist Alliance or any? So there wasn't political... No, but I went to meetings, maybe it was Dignity, friend of, you know, Jewish. Friends of mine took me to the Dignity when they were on 14th Street and 9th Avenue, second floor. There was a building there. I don't remember the address. Um, Dignity meets here once or twice also, or weekly or monthly. But uh, I wasn't interested. I wasn't, you know, I, I lost interest. And I was working, you know, I was working afternoon and nights, and my nights you know, were very difficult. Um, I liked my sports, you know. Um, went to a couple of off-Broadway shows. I went to see um, Jesus Christ Superstar. I saw it twice the original. I saw the remake at Madison Square Garden with the original guy, I can't even get his name, he couldn't hold it out. His throat was so burned out from alcohol and drugs, it was pathetic. And this past, Easter Sunday, they did it with John Legend hmm. on TV. Okay, it was a long program. Awesome. They gave it rave, rave reviews. Yes. And it was done right here in Brooklyn. Um, Marcy Avenue, and I think in the side street, I thought it was here in Manhattan, because in the beginning of the program, it says East 112th Street Production. I thought it was in Manhattan, some loft building. It was in a armory building, Marcy Avenue, Williamsburg. And part of the state said it was a big cross in which he laid on, you know, and then they picked him up on the cross. Fantastic production. Full TV. Yes. Did you convert? No. Um, <clears throat> Sorry for sidetracking. No, don't worry about it. Um, oral history is filled with sidetracking. Did, um, how much longer did you work at Stonewall? How much longer did to it To the very end, until they decided to close the doors, finally. And, was it. and when was Make, that? It became a juice by early July. So it wasn't open much longer after the no, raid? No, no, no. Maybe a week or two, and then that was it. They lost money. No one was coming down there or scared. They probably saw it was in the newspaper if it was printed and on TV. And uh, the sorry, Steve, you know, boom, that's it. They went to the Gold Bug and worked there a couple of nights, didn't like it. A friend of mine got me a job at Kennedy Airport with Restaurants Associates. October, for October 1st, um, oh, while I was at the Stonewall, I was collecting unemployment, so I had extra income. And, and my food stamps, uh, twenty-two fifty a week. I mean, a month. <laughs> it was paper money then. So when you worked at, when you worked at JFK, the whole gay bartending bar thing is over. Basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I worked in the restaurant in JFK, um, not as a bartender, but I did work as a bartender as needed. My transfer jobs over to. Um, I worked in Kennedy Airport, main terminal, from 70, excuse me, October 1st, 69, to October 1st, 73. I had a one-year break, 
And then I came back in 75, 10 years British Airways terminal. I waited tables, worked in the kitchen. Then I got, let go, they, they offered me a job in the Pan Am term. I just wanted out of the airport, I was tired of it. Then I worked in Manhattan for a temp agency. Payne Weber brokerage house in their dining room. Um, it was run by Marriott Corporation. And then I got the job in the airport again. The Guardian this time, close to home. I was a bartender, short order cook, waiter, there for several years. And I bounced around a lot in many different jobs. I also worked Madison Avenue, I told you, uh, for Revline through the temp agency in Brooklyn, mm. a counselor, and Spartan's apartment store. So I took retirement at 62. And I took my pension at 65. Nice. Yeah. I think I get Social Security when I'm 66. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, um, getting back to the idea of it being an uprising, at what point did you... Or a gay movement. Okay, there, there's a more strong I love word. uprising, but... Okay, uprising movement. Whether, you know, put the two together, please. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. You... Um, so you start, at what point would you say you did form a political consciousness around what had happened, seeing it as an uprising, seeing it as the Political, beginning? not necessarily just me as an individual, uh, not as political as a group. Um, but, you know, I saw a lot of gay groups forming in the 70s. Um, I can't remember the names. Um, I just mentioned, uh, they had the Stonewall Democratic Club. They had the Stonewall Veterans Group. I went to one or two of their meetings. I walked in and walked out. They, they got so, you know, about who's to be voted, you know, for Manhattan, people who's running for office here. I, mean, I live out in Queens, so I just stepped, I walked away. Okay. Act, and act up, too. I was a lot of friends. And act up, too. Um, I don't, like, I don't want to be out in protest and marching and holding signs. This is not me. So I went to two of their meetings right here in this building, um, downstairs, somebody's on the second floor. So did a I. A couple of years ago, a couple of years ago, but no, it's just not me. Um, I just had a question and it, it flew out of my head. What would you say, and we could wrap, I, I, know, I know the time. No, 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 what would I'm you, okay. What would you say, do you see Stonewall as, the beginning of something? Did it start? Prior oh, absolutely. To absolutely. Part of the gay movement, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Was absolutely. It, was it a positive thing? Yes. Yes. Scary with a lot of negativity towards it from the outside non gay community. But um, yes, you know, oh, yes. It, 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 it's long overdue. They've done this in the 50s and 60s. You've all been in freaking jail. <laughs> Well, you know, a lot of people think the time was ripe because, right and ripe because the women's movement was happening, the Black Panther movement was <laughs> happening, and there's a, another opening, right? There's, yeah. It, the time was right. Um, I made a joke of the women's movement. Yeah, when they burned their bras, I burned mine too. No. <laughs> was that? The joke, there's a joke. There's a joke. Must have some gay friends. Oh, that's one you told back then? Mm. That's cute. No, no, no. This is after Stonewall. Post, post Stonewall. After Stonewall. Yeah, yeah. Of course, my mom's, okay, my aunt, my aunt Claire, her sister law through marriage, the two brothers, um, the Deutsch family brothers, one of them had a cousin, a woman, and she was active with the um, women's movement. I said something at a family gathering once and says, oh, you want to know? Blah, blah. So my cousin says, Stevie, she's with the women's movement. <laughs> I don't remember what the hell it was. I don't think she's with us no more either. She's been long gone. <laughs> All right. She had been in her 50s or 60s back in those days, early 70s. Is there anything else that you'd like to say that I haven't asked about? Jerry Hoge, you know, Jerry Hoge who fought to keep the stone, the um, sage room open downstairs. How, he, how do he you was, spell he was, his last name? I, it, it was on the board. They took the picture down in the sage room. Hoge, H-O-O-S maybe? Who's okay. I'll, I'll find out during the week if you want. Um, he fought to keep the sage room open because when we moved from downstairs from the first floor up to the second floor, they wanted us out of the building. They didn't want us talking, by the way, to the young people in the backyard. That's a violation of um, civil rights, First Amendment, freedom of speech. Okay. Um, Jerry Hoosh 
was interviewed on one of the films, and it bothered me. He says um, the place was a filthy cesspool inside, but he was never inside. He was never inside. So he was outside with the groups. Okay, he was. He lived on Christmas Street in Hudson, over the X-rated bookshop on the corner there. He lived. There. He died two, three years ago of cancer. Um, maybe he had AIDS. I don't remember. Um, we didn't get along all that well um, on other subject matters involving stage. So how could you say something like that? I says, um, if you were never inside. He says, well, he says, um, people told me something to that effect. And it still bothers me today. Gave, gave it a negative bashing. How was it inside? It was nice. It was friendly. It, was, it kept clean. We had porters coming in, cleaning in the daytime. Um, there were bathrooms dra- are drag queens. There, there were drag queens, and there was drug sales going on there, too. Okay? I'll tell you that right now. In the back room over here, there's dark lights. You know, I knew they were dealing drugs, but I was too busy on the bar. Eight little stools back here at the back bar. People of all ages? What was the main uh, age? It was mostly young people. Occasionally you get older queens looking for young tricks to bag and take home. Middle age. But not, not so many old ones. The, the 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 noise and smoke from the jukebox was unbelievable. Loud jukebox, and my clothes smelled every night from smoke, cigarette smoke. I had to wear a new outfit every single day. I mean, I'm clean anyhow, but still. Those days are gone. Yes. Oh, over here. By the set, there was two little round tables with ashtrays. I think there's two, yes, but no, no loose chairs because it was a dance area. It's a small dance area. Where, where, um, it was multiracial. Where yes. blacks and whites dancing blacks, together. Blacks, Spanish, whites. Oh yes. Everybody was dancing together. There wasn't any. Yes, drag queens, Marsha P. Johnson. Yes, the um, button he's going but, to give me. No, 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 no. I'm and kidding. Photo. Okay, that's it. The only one I have. I don't remember where I got it from. Oh, no, it's a table downstairs here at the center. Um, and I took one. I said, oh, can I have one of them, please? And they let me have it. When did you meet Marsha? At the Stonewall, in, when we opened this. She was one of the patrons in there. Um, I would learned of her passing to, like, many years after. You know, she was murdered, I heard. Did you... Did I, you I, didn't, I didn't... We weren't close and friendly. Hello, how are you? Hi, honey, how are you? Boom, very friendly. You never... Nothing... Could say nothing bad about her. Her and Dennis from Staten Island, who was, they called Miss Twiggy, and Bambi, that drag queen who worked at the Goldberg, were, you know, quite studies in there. Um, Dennis I, Rivera? No, 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 no. No, no, she was in Puerto Rican. Dennis. Okay. Not, not, not that. No, and Bambi. Rivera. Bambi, some Puerto Rican queen from, very scorny, not a very pretty drag queen, very obvious. Her, the wig was hanging off her head at the time. Okay. All right. That's it. Okay. Thank you very much. Good luck next week. You can keep this if you want.